Today we're taking a look at the Geekcom IT12 Mini PC. Both Mini PCs in general and the Geekcom brand are new to me. Geekcom had actually reached out asking if I wanted to take a look at the IT12 Mini PC, and after taking a look at the specs, I was pretty interested. The IT12 platform comes in your standard Mini PC or NUC like sizing. The whole PC is only about 117mm by 112mm by 45.6mm. Kind of crazy to think it's basically smaller than a couple of 120mm fans stacked on top of each other. This will pretty much fit on any desk anywhere. Ecom also includes a VESA mounting bracket, which is pretty awesome to see. You should definitely be able to more effectively hide this PC or locate it somewhere a little more advantageous than just on the desk. The IT12 comes in two versions. You can either opt for the i5-12450H CPU that I have here with the XE graphics. You're getting 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3200, which is two 8 gig DIMMs by the way, and a 512 gig PCI Express 4.0 x 4 NVMe SSD. If you need a little bit more horsepower though, they do offer the IT12 in an i7 model. The i7 model comes with an i7-12650H, 32GB of system memory, and a 1TB NVMe SSD. Both the IT12 models appear to have pretty much the same layout. We're getting not one, but two 40 gigabits per second USB-C ports, which by the way support up to 8K 60Hz video out. We got two HDMI 2.0 ports one Intel 225V 2.5 gig NIC, and the barrel style power connector on the back. On the left side, we also have an SD card slot, which is kind of a nice inclusion. If you need to dump pictures or video off an SD card from, say, your camera, there's a slot built right into this PC, and it could be pretty handy on top of your desk. On the front side of the IT12, we have two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, with one of those having what looks like a bigger type of battery icon. It seems like this port probably offers a higher amperage for things like charging a tablet, I think. We've also got a 3.5mm audio jack. I'm a little surprised to see the audio jack, but I think it's a nice inclusion. I would say that I overall really like the selection of I.O. here. I think this is going to make the PC very handy for multiple purposes. If you want to use it as a standard PC, maybe it's a streaming device, maybe you want to do Steam in-home remote streaming, or maybe you just want to do a home lab on a small box like this. I'm happy to say whatever you end up using this for, Geekcom has you covered with a three-year warranty on this mini PC. I think that's quite a bit better than most of the other pre-builds that you might see around, and definitely better than anything you're going to buy on eBay. And looking at the IT12 chassis, it has a nicer smooth touch kind of outer layer of plastic. I think it looks aesthetically pleasing, but on the inside, there's actually a metal cage for the PC. I like this, it's definitely going to give the overall PC some strength. As for the wireless connectivity, we're getting an Intel AX211 adapter here. That means that we do have Wi-Fi 6E support for very fast wireless transfers. In my space, I was able to get about 1400 megabits per second, which is actually quite good for all of the stuff in between my PC and my wireless router. The PCI Express 4.0 times 4 SSD performed within the rated spec. I was getting anywhere between 3200 megabytes per second and 3300 megabytes per second in the 1 gig read tests in Crystal Disk Mark. As for the write scores, I was getting a little bit lower than I thought, around 1400 megabytes per second write, sometimes up to 1500. It's a little low, but you never know, Windows is probably doing stuff in the background. But in general, I found this to be more than enough. Like I had mentioned earlier, the NVMe included in this i5 bundle is a 512 gig SSD, but we do have the option to install another M.2 NVMe drive because there's also a 2242 slot nearby. In addition to that, we also have a 7mm thick SATA drive mount on the top of the case. When you take the PC apart, this floppy kind of ribbon cable that you see when you open up the IT12 is actually the SATA cable. It's attached pretty well, but you definitely don't want to damage it, so make sure not to pull on it too much, and you'll see the way it unfolds. You can pretty much set the top down right next to the side of the main body of the PC. I would say in general, there's a pretty good amount of space in here. I think there's pretty much more than enough to get at like the M.2 cards, the Wi-Fi card, the system memory. It's not as cramped as I thought a mini PC would be. Thankfully, Geekcom appreciates the desire of the average tinkerer. 
we do have the ability to upgrade pretty much anything that can be reasonably upgraded in a mini PC. We can upgrade the system memory, we can upgrade both of the NVMe drives, and we could upgrade the Wi-Fi card as well. Like I mentioned before, we have 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3200, but we could expand that up to 64 gigabytes. As for the cooling, I believe Ecom is essentially using what is a laptop or a mobile cooling solution, which basically boils down to a small heatsink that looks like it has two heat pipes and a centrifugal fan. This PC looks to be actually pretty well ventilated in my opinion. Honestly, the ventilation on this is better than some of the laptops I've worked on. The PC is relatively quiet when you're just browsing or watching YouTube. I found that the idle sound output at my sound floor was about 26 dBA. I did put the PC into Windows high performance mode for most of the testing, and it did enable the high performance fan as well. That can be done in BIOS. I saw a little bit of a performance bump in most of the benchmarks. The idle sound output stayed at about 26 dBA, but under load, the sound output was somewhere between 27 to 28 dBA, and now I was seeing peaks once in a while to 30 to 31 dBA. The fan did not really want to spin at full speed continuously. Once in a while it might spike up, but generally speaking, when I was running a benchmark, it would spike up and then quickly settle to a reasonable 27 dBA and pretty much stay there. This is actually great for sound output, but it's definitely going to hurt the turbo clock speed a little bit, depending on what your ambient temperature is. I wanted to get an idea of Cinebench testing. I did a single run multi-core test, and generally speaking, I was able to get about 9200 points in R23, which I think is pretty good. I know this system isn't geared towards gaming, but with the XE graphics, I had to test Time Spy, and I wanted to give the Final Fantasy XIV benchmark a try. Time Spy was a little rough, obviously, it's designed for dedicated GPUs, but the system managed to average just under 1,000 total points, and we are looking about 850 to 870 points on just the GPU score. In terms of the Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker benchmark, I wanted to see how this would do at 720p. I chose the laptop standard quality, and the system was really able to perform pretty well. We hit an average of about 9,800 points on the different runs, which at 720p is pretty much going to keep you around 60 FPS pretty much all the time. We might have been able to go up to 1080p if we were okay with 30 FPS, but I thought that was pretty good. I was very curious to see if the IT12 could handle any video editing, so I loaded up the free version of DaVinci Resolve, and I ran one of my to be honest, very hard projects on it. This particular project was 4K and had quite a few video layers. Scrubbing through during the editing process was pretty much okay. It wasn't that slow, didn't annoy me very much. The export process predictably took about two and a half to three times what my normal laptop does. It's not that fast, but at the same time, this is just integrated XE graphics. So the fact that you could probably do a simple 4K edit scrub through it fine, and export it in a reasonable amount of time, I think that's pretty awesome. I did want to take a look at the networking. I didn't really have any issues with the 225. I was basically able to get 2.5 gigabits per second out of the NIC sustained, which I was expecting. And like I said earlier, the wireless in my space maxed out around 12 to 1400 megabits per second, depending on the time of day and, you know, what was going on in my house. And in my opinion, I think that's pretty good. My wireless AX laptop adapter actually doesn't actually hit that most of the time. A lot of the time it's stuck at around 8 to 900 megabits, so that's pretty good. As for the overall build quality of this little guy, I was very happy with it. This is not a fragile PC. It's pretty hardy, even though it probably doesn't need to be. Inside, there were really no sharp edges at all when I opened it up, so I really liked that. And everything that I want to upgrade was pretty much socketable or installable and easy to get to. Nothing was glued or assembled in a particular way that looked like it was designed to prevent you from working on the computer, which I like. I also really liked how they kind of hid the assembly screws for the top and the bottom piece inside of these rubber feet. I think that's a clever design, and these rubber feet definitely help with the grip on a table surface. So yeah, I would say that this little mini PC packs a decent punch, especially for the cost. It'll definitely serve you well as a regular PC for surfing the web, doing spreadsheets, and work in general. I was able to do a little bit of light gaming on it, and some light video editing. From what I can see, you could probably turn this into a little mini home lab with Proxmox as well. The newer versions of Proxmox shouldn't have any issues supporting the P and E core architecture of the 12th gen and up. 
In addition to that, you have some interesting storage options, two M.2s and a SATA port. And of course, you have that two and a half gigabit NIC. Perhaps there's a future project here setting up Proxmox and seeing how much I can really squeeze out of this thing. I don't know, you guys let me know if you're interested in that. Anyways, as far as value goes, if you need a mini PC for your main machine, or you're looking for a secondary PC somewhere in your house, especially if it's a media PC, small virtualization lab, or like a Steam in-home streaming box, this is definitely a solid choice. Ecom is a newer brand to me, but it's actually been around for quite a while. I didn't know this, but it looks like they started in 2003 from what I saw on the website. I've definitely got a couple ideas what I might want to do with this IT12 next. Like I said, maybe a Steam streaming machine, maybe a Proxmox home lab, maybe both nestled into my living room. That'd be interesting. Anyways, get subscribed to the channel and ring that bell for more gaming and home lab videos. Until next time, stay juiced up.